guys, I'm back with um, G.S. Jeremy Stilton, Stilton, The Curse of the Cheese Pyramid. So let's get started right in. Wake up! Wake up! It was just before dawn in the middle of winter. The moon shone down over the mouse holes of New Mouse City. I was fast asleep under my comfy, cozy blanket, snoring away. Suddenly, the phone rang. I stumbled out of bed, sinking my paws into my new cat fur rug. It was so stuffed. I had brought it last weekend to the fur mart with my uncle Nibbles. It was expensive, but worth a very penny. Still half asleep, I stared down at the fluffy carpet. Then I picked up the phone. Hello, Stilton speaking. Jermo Ger Stilton, I murmured. A strangely familiar voice shrieked back at me. Wake up, he cried. Wake up. My ears were ringing like... Church bells at Christmas, Christmasy time. Who, 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 what, what, who, who is it? I stammered, but the man shrieker had already hung up. I glanced at the alarm clock, raised rat hairs. It was six o'clock in the morning. I dove back under my covers and continued storming. I woke up again at eight o'clock. I called a taxi to take me to office. I arrived at 9 o'clock. Oh yes, I forgot to mention that I run a newspaper. It is called the Rodents Gastel. It is the most popular newspaper on Mouse Island. I like to say the paper's a success before, just because of me. But I have lots of help. Still, I'm the big cheese at, at the office. As I was saying, I got to work at 9 o'clock sharp. <coughs> Sorry. I opened the door to my office wide and found myself snout to snout with my grandfather, William Sh Short Paws, also known as Cheap Mouse Willy. Grandfather William is a tough talking mouse. Everyone at the office is afraid of him. That's because he is the founder of the rodent Gastel. Um, I think I'll read only one more chapter. It's really big. My wallet bleeds. A, I barely had two paw steps into the room when Grandfather William began to began shouting at me. Grandson, how dare you arrive at this hour, he thundered. I cringed. Where had I heard that shrieking voice before? But, Grandfather, it's, it's nine o'clock. But this is when the office opens, I explained. Grandfather William just shook his head. Ridiculous, he cried. Do you realize have you slept half the day away, Grandson? I've been here since six o'clock. The lights went on the inside of my mouse-sized brain. Still, that was the shrieked voice I, I had heard on the phone this morning. Thanks for the wake-up call. I grumbled, curling up, curling his whiskers. His nigger was safe. Satisfaction. Now you. You listen to me, sonny boy, he ordered, putting my ear. Thing, things you, things are looking bad around you, very bad indeed. Do you know why? I opened my mouth to reply, but he didn't give me a chance to answer. I'll tell you why, he bellowed, because you're spending too much, too much, too much. You must. You must economize, 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 economize. Then he stuck his snout in my ear. Do you, do you know the meaning of the word, my dear grandson? He hollered in the top of his lungs. I'm talking economize. E as an end office, 
excavation immediately. C. As an cut back on all expenses. O. As an on your toes, things are about to change. N. As a no more spending. O. As an oh, what a mess you have made of things. M. As a man of your ways, grandson. Or I'm taking back the firm. I. As an I feel sick when you hear such a thing. Z. As a zero zilch, no spending. E. As an econ economize on everything. <coughs> I gulped. Why, as a yikes! I thought. I guess it wouldn't be a good time to tell Grandfather Wheeling about the expensive leather love seat or I had ordered for my office. But, 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 Grandfather, I began. He pulled me. He pulled my other ear. Grandfather, my pa. Starting today, I'm keeping track of everything. He shouted, waving the. Accounts books under my snout. I accept to see lots of changes. For example, how did you get here this morning? I chewed my whiskers. Well, I took a taxi. I replied. He slammed his paw on my table. Exactly, exactly. This is what I'm talking about. My wallet bleeds when I hear such a things. He grabbed me by the tie. Grandson, from now you. Take the subway to work. No, even better, you can come on your own paw. This way, you save the fear and you'll get in first rat shape. I felt complete, 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 oh, completely, oh, completely dazed and confused. I tried to sit down to catch my breath. But when I looked around for a chair, I realized Grandfather William had already made some changes. Some. Perfect, horrifying changes. All of my furniture was gone. The desk, designed by me by the famous Arctic Frank Lloyd, rat was nowhere in sight. I rolled around, around in shock. What did happen to my precious leather pocher? My important, imported. Cheaper cat fur carpet, my expensive artwork, and my priceless library. The office was empty. My heart sank like the big ball of cheese in singing Stone Plata on New Year's Eve. I had been robbed by my own relative. A plastic table and a plastic chair were only. Pieces of furniture in the whole room. <coughs> Grand grandfather looked around, satisfied. I sold everything to to a second paw dealer. He said with a smug smile, "You don't need any furniture, just a chair to sit on, sit on, and a table to write on." As he spoke, he banged his. Paw on the plastic table, which began to wobble. Quick as a rat, half his age, grandfather cut the table edge of before it tripped over. I may have gray fur, he he exclaimed, but this rodent's not dead yet. I've still got it. I swallowed hard. Grandfather, you stole my precious furniture to a second paw dealer. I squeaked. How much did you? He give you. I. He waved a wad of money under my snout. Look at that! He boasted. Not bad, huh? I counted the money and went pale. But this is way too little. Those things were antique books, valuable paintings. I cried, shaking my head in disbelief. I. I cry, shaking my head. Oh, and they were mine. By now, my head was spinning. I was in a sad state. I was either going to pull out all 
of my fur to stop like a newborn mouselet. Grandfather William did not seem to notice. He stuffed the money back to his wallet. Then he shouted, Grandson, you're about to get a lesson in business you'll never forget. Remember, I am the founder of this firm. I can shut it down with my twitch of tail. I'm going to read until here today, and I hope you have a good Friday. And I hope you, and I'll hope I see you soon. Bye.